Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne and psoriasis, and eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you're dealing with a particularly frustrating health challenge, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we want to help you out. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please head over to my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website or... Sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks, help spread the word about how important and powerful a good nutritional supplement program can be, or just get your products at the wholesale price if that's all you want to do for a one-time $25 fee. Check it out at pharmacistben.com criticalhealthnews.com or brightsideben.com. Also, the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And, of course, if you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, make sure you head over to truthtreatments.com. We've got a blog up, Skin Health blog. I also have a Skin Health blog on my Facebook page, The Truth with Ben. And you can also, of course, purchase Truth Skin Health products right off truthtreatments.com, including our retinol 5% gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. If you're dealing with rashes or eczema or you burn yourself or have sunburn, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream is a product I've been perfecting and working on for over 25 years, and the stuff is amazing. I'm not saying that just because it's my formulation. I'm saying that because... Insurance companies have paid for that product. Doctors have used that product, and I've seen incredible results from that product for itching, for rashes, for burns, for any kind of broken skin. Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we are talking about emulsions, the technical term for substances. They're blends of water and oil with a bridging agent or an adapter, if you will, called an emulsifier or an emulsifying agent. Yes, Yesterday, we left off talking about the classic example of a natural emulsion, which is milk. Butter is also an example of an emulsion and a pretty darn tasty one, too. And on top of the deliciousness of butter... It is loaded, absolutely packed with nutritional values, selenium, iodine, zinc, vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E. It's just packed. And also, it's got a couple of very interesting fats, one called CLA, which can be very helpful for weight loss and for building muscle. You can buy CLA supplements at most health food stores, but butter is a wonderful source of CLA. And there's another really interesting short-chain fatty acid, which we'll be talking about later because it has a lot to do with the ketogenic diet, called butyric acid. We've talked about this in the past. I think butyric acid is one of, if not the most underappreciated health substances, uh, uh, nutrients of all. Butyric acid is so, so, so important for intestinal health. 
for, uh, for preventing colon cancer, for feeding the intestinal cells. Butyric acid is produced by the action of probiotic bacteria on fiber. When we eat fiber, when we eat vegetables, the probiotics, the, the bacteria that live in our gut, munch down on that fiber and release butyric acid. And that butyric acid acts as a fuel source for the cells of our intestine. It energizes the cells of the intestine. That's why fiber is so, one of the reasons anyway, why fiber is so important and probiotics for that matter. But butyric acid is found in butter. Natural butyric acid is found in butter. That's where the name butter comes from, butyric acid. So you can get digestive health support, digestive health support by eating butter from your butyric acid. But butyric acid is also very important for mental health. I think that's so cool. Bacteria will chew on fiber and then they'll release butyric acid. And the butyric acid goes in your blood and affects your mood, makes you feel better. It's one of the reasons why people who eat fermented foods will report that they have better mood after they eat fermented food. I know people who say after they take their probiotics, their mood changes. There's, so, there's a critical, critical connection between the gut bacteria and the brain and mental health that nobody is talking about. For folks dealing with Alzheimer's disease or dementia or depression or, or just, just brain fog, probiotics and digestive health in general is phenomenally important for helping us take care of mental health issues and completely underappreciated. By the way, I'm going to be in, uh, in Toronto at the Total Health Expo. I'm going to be talking about Alzheimer's disease, which is not a disease. Don't let anybody fool you on that one. And as it turns out, the digest there's a major, major relationship between the microbiome and Alzheimer's disease and dementias for that matter. Anyway, butyric acid is uh, also an appetite suppressant. So a few slabs of butter on your broccoli or in your cauliflower, uh, cauliflower or on your asparagus or Brussels sprouts is not just nutritionally valuable. It's not just tasty and delicious. It's also incredibly satisfying. Butter is a diet tool. How do you like that? You can actually use butter to lose weight, not just because of the CLA content, but also because the butyric acid is satisfying. Oh, here's something else. Butter, particularly from grass-fed cattle, is also a, a, a source of a very, very interesting phytonutrient, a plant sterol, which is like a steroid substance made by plants. That's what plant sterols are, called stigmasterol, also known as the Wolzen anti-stiffness factor. Stigmasterol is a, a plant steroid substance that's been used to make synthetic progesterone from plants. It's uh, been used by drug companies to make synthetic cortisol. It's like a plant version of a steroid, a human or an animal steroid raw material. And, and drug companies, because obviously plants are everywhere and it's real easy to get stigmasterol, uh, they'll use the stigmasterol as a precursor, as a raw material to make steroids. It's, a, it's basically a steroid raw material. Well, it turns out that stigmasterol, which was discovered as by a gal named Woolzen, I think her name was Rosalind Woolzen, uh, they, before they knew it was stigmasterol, they called it the Woolzen anti-stiffness factor. And this is a fatty compound that can be used as protection for arthritis to loosen your joints. Now, you, gotta use pa you can't use uh, pasteurized butter. You've got to use unpasteurized butter because the stuff is destroyed by heat, by pasteurization. But it can be pretty darn effective. I remember my grandmother using, uh, using butter to massage her arthritic feet and her legs before she went to bed and first thing in the morning. She would rub butter on her feet and on her legs. And I was, I, I was a kid. I didn't know what the heck she was doing. I thought it was kind of silly. And I'm sure she didn't know about the wolves and anti-stiffness factor, but she wouldn't go a day or a night without her butter foot massage or butter joint massage. And you could do it too. It makes a great massage product, butter, plain old butter. Make sure it's unpasteurized though. People have been using butter for eons. In fact, butter may be the oldest processed food. Butter, butter and milk, well, milk's not really processed, but I think butter might be the oldest processed foods. It's certainly one of the oldest processed foods that human beings have eaten. You've got historical references to butter that go back 5,000 years. And it's been used traditionally throughout history as an active material. Ancient people respected the power of food as active medicine. The Egyptians used to use butter to heal the eyes. They didn't know about vitamin A, but they knew that, that there was something in butter that healed eyes. They also used it to treat burns. They used it to treat skin rashes and, and as a cosmetic, as a skin beautifier. Again, probably leveraging the vitamin A, maybe the vitamin D or the vitamin E or, S, or who knows? Butter's just loaded with good nutrition. Ancient Celts used to 
uh, wealthy Celts used to get buried in barrels of butter. That's how much butter was treasured and uh, uh, valued by ancient cultures. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us today. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and archived at brightsideben.com and also uh, benfuchsarchives.com. Both pages have search engines. If you miss a program or you want to review a program or uh, you want to direct a client or a patient or a friend or family member to a program on a specific topic, head over to benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up or brightsideben.com. Okay, so we're talking about butter. The wool's an anti-stiffness factor. Use butter as a massage. Hey, I like that. Butter is amazing, amazing stuff. There's also carotenoids in butter. Plant nutrients, beta carotene, xanthine, uh, zeaxanthine, lutein. There's a, uh, there's a bunch of the, these carotenoids in butter, particularly beta carotene, and that's what gives uh, butter its characteristic yellow coloring. Butter makers are quite proud of their their yellow coloring, and and understandably so. It's really beautiful when yellow, beautiful yellow butter. In fact, when margarine was first invented, the butter manufacturers made the margarine manufacturers dye their product orange. Margarine, I I think, I'm not sure I've had margarine in so long, but it used to be orange, and and that's because the butter manufacturers didn't want anybody to be confused between butter and margarine. So they actually legally went to court and had the government mandate that margarine producers had to dye their product orange. So here's another little trick for you. If you... uh, if you, take your, if you take butter and you mix it with salt, butter's a fat, and fats are basically storage forms of electrical energy, electrons specifically. That's why we run our cars and our lawnmowers and our airplanes and our machinery on oil. When the oil is heated, the, all the electrons, the electrical energy is released. So fats and oils are dense storage forms of electrical energy. Salt, on the other hand, conducts electrical energy. That's how you make batteries, with salts zinc batteries or lithium batteries. These are types of salt batteries. So salt has a conductive power and oils have a storage power. And when you mix salt and fat together, you get a flavor explosion. And the combination of salt and butter together are incredibly, incredibly delicious. Particularly if you heat the butter just slightly and add salt. And then whatever you put that salt butter on will have a majorly amped up flavor. Of course, you want to use Celtic sea salt to make sure you're getting, uh, taking advantage of all the minerals. But the combination of salt and butter is incredibly delicious and particularly so when you put it on sugar. That's how uh, most recipes most uh, uh, really super sweet recipes, like Cinnabon or something like that, will always mix a little salt in with the sugar and the oil. Salt and sugar and oil are three basic flavors that human beings cannot resist. Salt and sugar and oil. In fact, if you, most fast foods are combinations of salt and sugar and oil. French fries are salt and sugar and oil. Potato chips are salt and sugar and oil. Popcorn, salt and sugar and oil. Most, most snack foods, pizza, salt and sugar and oil. Burritos, salt and sugar and oil. Hamburgers, salt and sugar and oil. Most of the foods that we crave are salt and sugar and oil, those three flavors. And if you mix your butter with salt and put it on top of a real good sugar, like a natural sugar, like something like uh, uh, broccoli when it's heated, or Brussels sprouts, or if you really want, want a big hit of sugar, use fruit, mix salt and butter, a touch of salt and butter with uh, apples, with cooked apples. The salt, you'll notice that it, 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 do it two ways. Take your baked apple, if you're not a bake, you just stick an apple in the, in the oven, basically, and you bake it, and that releases the sugar, big time. And a baked apple is way sweeter than a regular apple because heat releases sugar. So you take your baked apple, you put a bunch of butter on it. I'm sure some of you guys, are, your mouth is watering right now. Mine is. You take your baked apple, you put a bunch of butter on it, and then you eat it. It'll be really tasty and delicious. But if you put a little touch of salt on there, the flavor will be amped up even more. And that's a combination of the electrical conductivity of the salt in combination with, the, uh, with all that electrical energy that's stored in the butter. And then the sugar, uh, the salt and the, and, the, uh, and the oil, amp up the flavor of the sugar so the sugar tastes super sweet. 
So people have been, we've known about butter for a long time. It's one of the oldest processed foods, uh, goes back 5,000 years. These days, there's lots of different butters. If you uh, go to the grocery store, you'll find, even just a regular grocery store, you'll find three or four different types of butter. You'll find sweet cream butter, salted sweet cream butter, unsalted sweet cream butter. Sweet cream butter is made from pasteurized milk, sometimes pasteurized cream or, or a blend of pasteurized milk or cream. I like cultured butter. Cultured butter, as the name implies, is made from cultured cream, basically a type of sour cream. I don't think it's exactly sour cream, but it's kind of the same idea. It's a fermented cream. Cultured butter has a little tangy flavor to it. It's got the acids that are released from the bacteria. And also, if it's not pasteurized, cultured butter will have a little bit of um, a probiotic value for you as well. But it can't be pasteurized because that will destroy the bacteria. And you can make your own cultured butter if you just whip up some sour cream. And you got to... It takes a while to whip it up, but basically you're just you're just making butter from cream, but you're making it from sour cream. Another really interesting food emulsion is mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is uh, made by the by the action of the classic emulsifying agent, which we talked about yesterday, which is lecithin, from the egg, from an egg. You take uh, uh, an egg is what gives mayonnaise this kind of creamy nature, and, and that's one of the things that eggs do. They make things creamy. That's why chefs love eggs because they make things creamy. If you take a plain old combination of water and vinegar, just uh, a little bit of water, I'm sorry, a little bit of water or vinegar, and uh, mix it up with, uh, with vegetable oil, say vinegar and vegetable oil, or water and vegetable oil, you just basically have vinegar, you'll just have an oil, or you'll have a vinegar and oil dressing. But if you plop in an egg yolk and mix it all up, then you get this delicious creamy compound called mayonnaise, which is just basically vinegar and oil with a little with an egg in it. The egg, the, the lecithin in the egg creates an emulsion. And the creaminess of the mayonnaise, the creaminess of the the creaminess that the uh, egg imparts to the mayonnaise can be thought of as the food equivalent of a skincare cream, of a cosmetic cream. That's what a cosmetic cream is, as we said yesterday. Cosmetic cream is just basically water, oil, and emulsifying agent. Well, mayonnaise, water, oil, emulsifying agent, vinegar, perhaps, or lemon juice, and oil, and an emulsifying agent. Mayonnaise, as a matter of fact, is a pretty darn nice cosmetic product. You can make your own skin lightening product, skin lightening mayonnaise type anti-aging cream if you combine a little bit of glycolic acid or alpha hydroxy acid or some lemon juice, maybe a tablespoonful of lemon juice, throw in a little bit of wine maybe, a few drops of wine, and then add some oil, add flaxseed oil or, or grapeseed oil or olive oil, whatever oil you like. Make sure it's fresh. You can use jojoba oil, which is very interesting stuff. We haven't talked about jojoba oil. It's not really an oil. Uh, but it's really great for your skin. And then you maybe take a, a couple vitamin E capsules, uh, pierce them with little pins, squeeze them in, squeeze the vitamin E in, add an egg yolk or two, whip it all up. It makes a great skin softening uh, skin care cream, anti-aging cream. You can leave it on for a mask. It'll soften your skin. The oil will soften your skin. The alpha hydroxy acids or the lemon juice will help brighten the skin. Stick it in the fridge. Make it fresh every couple of days. And if you don't use it, you can add it to your tuna fish and, and make yourself a nice uh, uh, tuna salad. How do you like that? Mayonnaise is awesome stuff. Eggs are awesome stuff. Eggs are basically emulsions. That's what an egg is. It's a mixture of fat and water brought together by the action of lecithin. And if you haven't gotten the idea yet, lecithin is one of my all-time incredibly, incredibly favorite uh, dietary supplements. And it's, it is a nutritional supplement. It's got wonderful nutritional value. All right, we'll talk about, uh, we'll continue talking about this when we come back from our break and take your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're coming back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben and got lines open at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 if you have questions about the longevity products or health, nutrition, or prescription drugs. If you want to wean someone or yourself off of off your uh, off your prescription drug program and get on some supplements, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're want, interested in checking out our Truth Treatment products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a specially long look at our retinol 5% gel made with 5% retinol. You're not going to see that anywhere. No matter what anybody tells you, that's the highest concentration of retinol anywhere. And what does that mean for you? That means you don't use a lot of product. 
that means you get tremendous effects. And that means your products last a really long time. Retinol 5% gel in a one-ounce size will last you six months or more if you use as directed. And by the way, retinol is not just great for your skin or for your face. It's also great for your feet. Wonderful for a, as a foot softener or for your elbows. It'll soften any skin, really. And of course, it's awesome for acne and for blemished skin, hyperpigmentation. You can use it as spot treatment or as a general uh, peeling cream, as an anti-aging peeling or flaking product. That's truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, from, the, uh, from my favorite science magazine, or one of my favorite science magazines, Science News. I thought this article was really interesting. Waking the vagus. The vagus nerve major nerve in the body is actually being used, actually being uh, uh, studied anyway, as a uh, antidepressant nerve. Doctors are looking at stimulating the vagus nerve electronically to combat depression and also to combat uh, epilepsy for that matter. Now why would that be? Why would turning on or stimulating, electrically activating, zapping the vagus nerve with electricity have be an antidepressant? Why would it help the heart beat more effectively? Why would it be used for seizure disorders? Because the vagus nerve activates the rest and relax nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. I love this. They didn't mention, didn't mention this once in this article about activating the parasympathetic nervous system, of course, because they're pretty much you know, medical model folks who who uh, wrote this thing, but the fact is you can activate your own vagus nerve. You don't need to go to a doctor to have it activated electronically. Just breathe correctly. Relax your body. Take a hot bath. Everything we talk about when we talk about the rest and relaxed nervous system, we're really talking about activating the vagus nerve. Well now, according to Science News anyway, doctors are looking at electronically activating or electrically activating the vagus nerve. You go into the doctor's office or the hospital or wherever they're going to do it and zap. They'll zap your vagus nerve. Well, you do the same thing at home from the comfort of your own living room. And that's the bright side, folks. You can do the same thing at home. You could do the same thing a doctor can do in terms of chronic degenerative diseases anyway. You could do the same thing that a doctor's going to do for you from the comfort of your own living room by getting on a good nutritional supplement program, making sure that you're breathing correctly, taking hot baths, massage and relaxing and meditating. And Speaking of meditation, I've been getting these letters about from folks who think that there's something wrong with meditation or there's something religious about meditation. It's not religious. Meditation is not a religious thing. It can be. Jesus meditated, but it's not a religious thing. This is from uh, this is an article from uh, from the Osher Center for Integrative Medicine at the University of California, in San Francisco. Mindful eating and meditation lead to better metabolic health. That's really what meditation is. It's just paying attention. It's just being aware. Now you can be aware of God, and you'll call it a spiritual me or, or, or the life force, and you can call it a spiritual thing. But you can also be aware of your food. And by the way, that's a great way to activate the vagus nerve, paying attention to what we're eating. You will eat a lot less food if you pay attention to it. If you chew your food real slowly, it forces you to pay attention to your food. That's why they used to say, chew your food 100 times or 50 times. You will eat a lot less food. In fact, food manufacturers will make their food super soft so you can't chew it, so you eat more food. They'll actually put chemicals in the food, chicken especially. If you ever go to Boston Chicken and you notice how soft and mushy the chicken is, it's because they put softeners in the meat, including sometimes gluten. Gluten attracts water, makes the meat a little bit softer. Phosphorus is sometimes used. The idea being that you'll, eat le you'll, uh, you'll chew your food less and the stuff will slip down your throat. They actually call it slip, food slip, and you'll eat more food. On the other hand, by chewing your food slowly, you're gonna find you eat less food and you're gonna also notice that if you get a McDonald's hamburger, you don't wanna chew it so slowly because you don't wanna taste that stuff. You wanna wolf that down. That's why they call it fast food. Not because they serve it to you fast, because you gotta eat it fast. If you wanna quit your hamburger, if your hamburger habit, if you're eating lots of hamburgers or cheeseburgers, get your McDonald's or wherever you get your cheeseburger and chew it really, really slowly and let all those particles of gristle and, and, and whatever the kind of meat it is, touch your taste buds and contact your taste buds. You probably won't even eat half, half the hamburger. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Ohio and welcome Gretchen to the Bright Side. What's going on, Gretchen? Hi. Hey, what's up? I uh, wanted to know if you know anything about reverse osmosis water being bad for you. Who told you it's bad for you? It's actually one of the best waters you can drink. Why do you, who, where did you hear it's bad for you? 
Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I had a, a guy come in to put change the filter. Yeah. And he happened to notice that I had uh, inserted, I didn't do it, but there was inserted a triway thing so that some of the water coming out of the RO filter uh, went over to the furnace to so that it went for my uh, hum- humidifier. Um, so it didn't cause so much stuff over there. I, I'm not and, sure what you're saying, though, Gretchen. Are you, how would reverse osmosis be bad? Any well, idea? Well, this is what I. This is actually what I'm asking you because. Oh, okay. Well, well, let's let's we talk about anything. He, we didn't know anything about this, but he noticed that it was a metal. Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I, th- I think I know what you're talking about. L- let me talk, tell you about reverse osmosis water. It's basically filtered water. That's all it is. It's a way of driving water through a special filter using osmosis, or using reverse osmosis, I should say. Osmosis is when water goes from one direction to another. Reverse osmosis is when you force it to go in the opposite direction. So basically, it's filtered. You force it through a filter. Now, he may have been saying that the filter they were using was metal, and some of the particles may be affecting your furnace. I think that might be what he's talking about. But as far as the water goes... Oh, the, wait a, wait go a ahead. minute. Let me tell you. Originally, it was put in so that the water went to my refrigerator. So I was okay. drinking this uh, reverse osmosis water out of the refrigerator. Okay. Well, if it's reverse osmosis... when he saw this piece of metal that we had put in to divert some of the water to uh-huh. the furnace, I see. he said I see. that that was, would make me sick because the water coming out of the the filter would leach or or yeah bring I stuff s- out of that metal. And I see I what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Uh, if you had regular reverse osmosis water like uh, uh, Dasani or Aquafina, uh, these tend to be reverse osmosis waters. They basically Aquafina and Dasani or Coke and Pepsi taking tap water from some municipality wherever they're making it and driving it through a reverse osmosis filter. It filters the water and it has actually a good source. It's a good way to clean your water. I'm not sure it's as good as distilled, uh, which I think is the best and the tastiest. And I've been drinking distilled for a long time. And by the way, we haven't talked about water. For, but I wonder how much of our cancer epidemic and uh, kidney cancers and prostate cancers and just overall poor health is a result of tap water. Nobody is talking about this. Personally, I've only, you know, I'll do, I'll do tap water occasionally, but for the most part, most of the water I drink is, is distilled. Reverse osmosis is not a bad way to go, Gretchen, to, to cut to the chase. I'll, I'll leave you on for the, if you want to stay on, I'll leave you on, and then we can finish up and come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. This is The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. 844 is our number. A case of gut-induced mania resolved with charcoal. Using charcoal capsules actually actually healed someone of, uh, apparently, according to this article anyway. This is from, uh, where is this from here? Can't even see where this is from. Uh, using charcoal capsules healed mania. Why would that be? Well, gut-induced mania caused by probiotics, toxicity in the gut. Charcoal helps clear the gut out of toxins, and voila, mental health benefits. That's, uh, that's from Dr. Kelly Brogan, whoever that is. All right, Gretchen in Ohio. Give you a, yeah. one more. What, anything else going on? Well, I, you're surprising me because I looked this up online, and this was from the World Health Organization, and they were giving a warning about using RO water because it removes all the uh, bad stuff, but it also removes beneficial calcium, Benef- magnesium, and stuff. Don't so get, you, you don't need to get your, you, you don't, first of all, I don't, I don't pay for uh, very little attention to anything the World Health Organization says. That's first of all. Oh, okay. S- well, second of all, s- second of all, no, hang on, girl, Gretchen. Calcium and, and magnesium and minerals, you want to get that from food, not from water. Although spring water, now that's different. Spring water is a different type of water. And there's mineral, wa- mineralized waters you get from springs. Those are a different type of mineral. But the kind of mineral that you're getting from most water, from tap water, is not good minerals. 
You know, they call them. The, the, I, I have I have well water. Now, well water is a little different. Yes, well water is a little different. You have to check the mineral content of the well water. I'm not sure about that, but it's still not the same as spring water. Spring water has got electrically activated minerals. The springs create a movement, and and there's a very interesting thing that happens. We've talked about this in the past between minerals and movement, and between minerals, water, and movement. So spring water is a little different. But the reverse osmosis water, reverse osmosis osmosis filters that the World Health Organization is talking about will filter out the crappy minerals, the heavy minerals, the sticky minerals. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. For Gretchen, I got to motivate, my dear. Good to talk to you. I do like reverse osmosis. I like distilled water the best and reverse osmosis the second best because it's the fluoride. Forget your minerals somewhere else, Gretchen. You want to get rid of the fluoride. You want to get rid of the, the, the uh, chlorine if you can. You want to get rid of the, of the poisons. You want to get rid of, you want to purify your water, basically. Gretchen, I got to move. Thank you for your call, okay? Have a beautiful day. Josie in Texas, welcome to the Bright Side. What's going on? Uh, hi. Um, yeah, no, I was calling to see. I, I'm 57, and uh, as well as some wrinkles uh, creeped up on, on, on me, and I was, wanted to ask you, what can I do? You need some beef. You need some beef in there, right? Beef and fat, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. happens when we get older. That's what thinning skin is. And this is, this is, let me explain this real quickly about the skin. We don't look at the skin correctly. And because we don't look at the skin correctly or see it correctly, we get fooled by products. In order to understand how to use products correctly and how to have great skin as we get older, you got to understand that the skin basically has two layers. It has multiple layers, but basically two layers, a top layer and a bottom layer. Where do you think the wrinkles are taking place? Uh, the bottom layer? You got it, Josie. Not the top layer. In order to get take care of wrinkles, you got to get to the bottom layer. Now, topically, there's only two things that will get to the bottom layer and have any effect on wrinkles. And that's why I made my truth treatment products, by the way. I learned this in the pharmacy. Only vitamin C and vitamin A, to any significant extent, will take care of wrinkles when they're applied topically. And by vitamin A, I'm talking retinol and retinoic acid, not the cheap stuff that you get in the department store, the retinol palmitate. Just retinol and retinoic acid. Retinoic acid requires a prescription. Retinol does not. And then the second thing that will get to the lower layers where the wrinkles are is vitamin C in its fatty form, not the cheapo watery stuff that you get from the bologna products. And there's a lot of bologna products out there. And it ticks me off, really. Uh, you need to have a fatty form of vitamin C to get into the lower layers. However, this is just the tip of the iceberg, Josie. When we get older and our skin gets thinner, it's because that lower layer is getting thinner. Not the surface, the lower layer. And the way you want to get that lower layer beefy again is by making sure you're taking care of your nutrition. That's the most important thing. Protein and fat, essential fatty acids, and lots of protein, especially bone soup protein. That bone soup, that cartilage and bone soup will fatten up your skin. Does that make sense, Josie? Yeah, I, yeah, and then I to, let me say a couple more things. Then vitamin okay. C. Nothing will the same way vitamin C works topically. It also works internally. Making sure you're getting enough vitamin C and making sure your digestive system is working correctly. The next thing is blood sugar. When your blood sugar goes up, you, that lower layer will start to get thinner. So first of all, you got to make sure you're doing your nutrients and absorbing your nutrients at the digestive system level. The second thing is you got to make sure you're taking care of your blood sugar. Because when the blood sugar goes up and we lose control of our blood sugar, which happens as we get older, that lower layer will get damaged and will not get repaired. And then the third thing is relaxing the body because under the conditions of cortisol or stress hormone, two things will happen. Number one, you won't be able to make that, that lower layer thick. Number two, the lower layer will get degraded. And on top of all that, your thyroid will start to slow down and that will impair healing of that lower layer as well. And oh, by the way, that's the triangle of disease, which affects every single system. Wrinkles are a sign that your body is breaking down. And not just wrinkles, but thinning skin is a sign that the body is breaking down. That means that we're at higher risk for osteoporosis, we're at higher risk for atherosclerosis and heart disease, we're at higher risk for kidney disease, we're at higher risk for cancer, we're at higher risk for just falling apart, Alzheimer's disease, you name it. So you got to treat thinning skin 
at the causal level because it's telling you the body's starting to break down. And that means protein especially, making sure you're absorbing your protein, digesting your protein, correcting any digestive health issues, using vitamin C, stabilizing the blood sugar, relaxing the body, and making sure you're on the mighty 90 essential nutrients. And then... If you want to do one more thing, get on your Truth Treatment products. Make sure you're using your Retinol 5% gel as well as your Truth Serum and Truth Balm to get the topical, uh, the topical benefits of vitamin C and vitamin A. Okay, does that make sense, Josie? Eat your beef. Yeah. Eat yeah, your meat. Yeah, okay, eat my, eat my beef. Um, eat your beef. And, and water. Uh, what do you think about smart water? Silly. Did you get smarter when you drank it, Josie? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it's, well, me, I mean, no. Water, it, it what's it in it? I don't even know what's in it. I just, I'm suspicious. I shouldn't say that. What's in it? What is the app? What's in it, Josie? Well, Do you know? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know what's in it. You know, I've well, seen it all the time, but I just, it just seems suspicious to me. But I should look at it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to walk that last comment back. Let me, let me look at some smart water and then uh, I'll let you know tomorrow or, or in the next day. Okay. Who does? Jennifer Aniston. Oh, Jennifer Aniston. Well, I do like Jennifer Aniston. I will say that. <laughs> I do like Jen. All right. I'm just kidding you. Have a beautiful day, Josie. We'll talk again later. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. All right. Dave in Canada. What's up? Welcome to the bright side. Dave? Uh, hello, Ben. Hey, Dave. What's up, man? Um, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Oh, a little okay. over two years ago. Um, went to the, you know how they always send you to the, to the uh, dietitian and they tell you to follow the diet that you've been following for pretty right. much all of your life? <laughs> right. They gave you the diabetes in the first place, right? <laughs> exactly. So that's what <laughs> I was kind of thinking, like, how can I follow this and uh, fix my diabetes? So yeah, it's so easy, follow, Dave. Go ahead. I sort of followed everything that, uh, well, I didn't follow what you were telling, but I sort of stumbled upon you and found out that you're saying sort of what I was what doing. you were doing. You know, the, the fasting, the, uh, the uh, low-carb, high-fat, and oh. uh, get, getting rid of all the carbs and stuff. And that worked good. really well. Oh. Um, I went back to the doctor, and he said, um, pretty much whatever you're doing, keep it up, because uh, what you've done is impossible. <laughs> That's great. I love it. I he said, what you did was impossible. Yes. That's the medical model. To him, it was impossible. To him, it was like an, it was alien. There's no way that should have happened. But it's common sense. You know, it's not difficult. Diabetes is an eating disease. There's only two reasons why the blood sugar goes up. Food and cortisol, stress hormone. Now, the stress hormone is not necessarily, although it's a little bit, partially involves eating. But the, mo the bulk of it is eating. That means keeping your blood sugar down by stop not eating foods that spike your blood sugar. It's as simple as that. Now, the intermittent fasting will help. You know, are you on the Sweeties or any of the Longevity products? Uh, some BTT. Try get throw in the sweeties. I mean, it sounds like you're on the right track. I don't want to tell you, you know, I don't want to change what you're doing. It sounds like you're doing a great job. You know, he, what your doctor should have said is, what are you doing so I could tell my other patients? Oh, exactly. You know, that would have been the smart thing to do. Dave, I got to motivate. Quick, that, no, real quick. You got something? A quick question. Yeah. Um, you know, like when Easter rolls around or Christmas and I have yeah. a little something sweet, yeah. it, it's really hard to stop. And you know, couple, something in yeah. my diet? No, no. When, once you start, it's almost impossible to stop because you get a surge of, of brain chemicals dopamine and serotonin neurotransmitters and your body craves those things so what you want to do if you go and fall off the wagon I only got about 15 seconds here Dave if you fall off the wagon drink a bunch of water and eat a lot of fiber vegetables and if you don't want to uh, fall off the wagon eat a bunch of veggies first that's all the time we have for today I'm pharmacist Ben thanks for listening friends we'll talk to you all later have a beautiful wonderful spectacular day bye for now